So the United Kingdom and the United States have long had a so-called special relationship. This is the story of a special relationship between graphic design students across the Atlantic. Similarly different is a visual collaboration between graphic design students from Portland State University and London College of Communication. It's an annual project and we've been running it since uh, 2013. And it experiments with the notion of cultural points of view through the mediums of letterpress, screen printing, risograph and digital reproduction. And at the end of the process, the students exhibit in both London and Portland. So why is a project like this worth exploring? And I think the, um, we all know that the internet has had this homogenizing effect of design and um, you see a lot of similarities. But there are still a lot of regional uh, differences that persist and um, perhaps the quickest window to seeing that is through educational um, experiences. And I've been lucky to experience both education in the US and the UK. Um, and got a sort of front seat to that myself. Generally speaking, design education in the US um, focuses on a more commercially um, driven subject matter and skills based, um, whereas the UK focuses more on, I would say, concept, rather sort of regardless of medium um, and with less of a concern of commercial output, at least in the, in, in the educational sphere. I haven't found either one to be better than the other, um, <clears throat> but I think each one sort of serves the students of their region for, their, um, for where they will be graduating. I'm really happy that I got to experience both. Um, the, um, sorry, was, there's our little, <laughs> our little Venn diagram to show you, not to scale. Um, so, of course, the students benefit from travel itself. Um, outside of workshop time with um, our program, they get to um, experience language, architecture, fashion, and of course, typography throughout the city, which um, definitely does have these slight differences. Um, and they're exposed to new cultures that bring with them new ways of seeing, thinking, and doing. But back to where it all started, um, Oswin and I met at grad school in London at Central St. Martins, and um, I realized at, during my time there that there was definitely some similar differences to the way that um, the two design cultures, UK and US, um, are. And when I became a tenure track professor here in Portland, I wanted to find a way to give some of that experience to my own students. And so um, I reached out to Oswin to try to make that a reality. So Oswin was teaching um, at UCA Farnham, which is a school just outside of London. And we decided we would attempt a remote collaboration. And um, <clears throat> So this is one of the, you can see some of the results here from that remote collaboration. Um, we gave each student a partner across the Atlantic and um, we asked them to supply each other with um, information, stories, histories, and visual reference material about their own hometowns. And their hometowns may or may not have been Portland or Farnham, they may have come from different um, areas. And then each student would take that source material and create a piece of work about their partner's home. Um, and so the works were then presented at both schools and you can see the books there. Um, we also had um, the work um, shown at larger scale. And Oswin and I were able to travel to each other's locations um, with some financial support from our institutions. So uh, the previous slide was in the UK and then here is at Portland State University. Um, the following year, Oswin's colleague Craig Burston became the head of graphic and media design, uh, the graphic and media design course at London College of Communication. So we quickly jumped on that bandwagon to get to London. <laughs> And um, we want, I tried to figure out, okay, now I really want to bring students to London. And luckily, Portland State University 
is, um, has a great international um, office that helps uh, professors create faculty-led trips. So I was really supported in the process of doing that. You should definitely, those of you teaching at universities, if you're curious about it, reach out to your international office. Faculty-led trips are often supported in universities. Um, <clears throat> Oswin and I got busy um, working on new briefs for the students to collaborate on. Their first one was to design a letter form that would become a piece of the logo type. In this case, they were creating, um, I think the original one was to create um, a letter form that sort of re related to their, um, to their neighborhood. Um, at, uh, the, so this was in, I think, in 2014. Over the years, we have given them varying levels of restrictions for the logo type. So as you can see here, we gave them a lot more restrictions on this one. And then, um, of course, this one, we had a lot less <laughs> restrictions given. And this is our most recent. We actually just returned from London, I think, two days ago, three days ago. Um, <laughs> So here's an example itinerary. The, the trip is now a three-week period. The students wanted me to extend it from two and a half weeks because they wanted more time to um, explore and to make. Um, workshops have included letterpress, screen printing, typography, risograph, um, and pinhole photography, and, uh, in addition to other things, uh, which I'll share. So the students start out with a, a short presentation, which sounds a little bit scary. Um, students are at, at all levels, so they could be a sophomore, they could, well, sophomore, junior, or senior, generally speaking, or second year or third year. Um, and the idea here is just to get it all out there really quickly, and uh, this is something we had to do in grad school, and I thought it worked really well, because basically um, you share something you're interested in, some of your own work, and I also asked them to share uh, some of their preconceived notions about the other person's culture, and usually some, some laughs ensue, and it just sort of breaks the ice a little bit. Then we go to the pub afterwards, because that's what you do. And, um, and then it gives, then they have something already to talk about it. You know, it's like, oh, you're the person who did that infographic um, on internet dating, and oh, you're the, you're the guy that really loves Gilbert and George. And then it's already, they're already rolling. So we're really lucky to have the chance to get to work with the excellent technicians that work at London College of Communication. This is Barbara Salvadori, um, who is demonstrating uh, screen printing techniques. <clears throat> this year's screen printing required the students, or we asked the students to create a flag uh, for a nation or a community that was real or imagined, and they worked in groups. And so we had, a f we had students come up with a flag uh, for colonizers of Mars. We had um, an, an, a flag for an international, the international creative community. We had um, a flag that was about um, w uh, signal signifying welcoming of immigrants. Um, and then um, this one, which had so many variations that the students decided to show quite a lot of uh, those variations. This was um, uh, for the Generation Z. They were ex ex uh, exploring that um, young Generation Z. Um, and one thing that I personally love about working with the letterpress technicians at London College of Communication is that it gives our students a chance, I, I, when I say our students, I say our uh, USA students, a chance to um, see how um, letterpress is being pushed um, into the future or you know, um, not being held uh, quite so in such a precious way as I feel like sometimes it is here in the US. Um, these sheets were, these, they, the students ran across the street, got this newspaper, then ran it through the press with all these different colors. They just kept adding ink. Um, and then as you can see, tried a bunch of different colors, ran it through at different angles. Um, they, they allow a lot of experimentation in the letterpress workshop. The technicians who work there are always up for the kind of um, challenges that Oswin and I um, come up with. So this, 
This particular year sh shown here, we wanted the students to work modularly. So um, the challenge was to create a piece of work that um, somehow communicated um, uh, the relationship between the two uh, cities of Portland and uh, London. So um, this shows um, the students planning their design on grid paper and then um, working with the metal type and they're working with the, the underside of the uh, printing material. And then there's one, um, there's one color of the design all locked up um, and the design is uh, the two rivers of the two cities, the Thames and the Willamette. Here they are printing. And, and this happens in two days. I mean, the students, it, again, it's, it's like they, they get an induction in, I want to say, a half an hour, and then it's like you've got, your, you've got type in your hand, um, which, is, which I love. Um, and then here's the final piece. There's just a little bit of there's just a little bit of actual type on there to indicate the rivers. And this is just another example showing an, uh, another piece from that same brief of um, all this type locked together, completely created with um, the undersides of um, type material. One of my favorite briefs. Uh, that we've done was this one in which I asked the students, I'd call it the Roundel remix, and um, this is a, a critique where the students are working on the project and I asked them to, um, <clears throat> to take the iconic underground mark and create their own interpretation of it, which is, you know, the, the London uh, Transport for London does it all the time. Um, and it's such an iconic mark that it can stand up to just about any remix. Um, and it's a great um, little piece to work with. Um, and I think some of, the, some of the works that the students made are just as good as stuff I've seen around um, in the underground. The piece on the left was made from archival images from uh, London Transport's website, I think, or she, somehow she found this archival material. So it's literally from their, their archival material. And this brief was um, a neighborhoods one, which we've actually run a couple of times um, with slightly different uh, emphasis. And from the most recent trip, um, we asked them to produce a type-driven piece based on the neighborhood. We gave them a list, and they had to choose from them. Uh, so this is overheard conversations in Bloomsbury. And then this one, uh, again, the same brief. Uh, a student was exploring Whitechapel and the various immigrant communities, um, many of whom no longer exist, um, but have passed through and settled in uh, Whitechapel. And towards the end of um, the three weeks, two and a half weeks, three weeks, um, the students... Uh, put together a catalogue in order to document um, the whole process that also goes as part of the exhibition. The format and processes vary. Uh, this is from a couple of years ago, a group of students. Um, we had budget to print offset LIFO, um, and so we m managed to take all the students to a large printer on the outskirts of London so they could do a press pass and also, as part of it, see it on press being printed, ready for folding. But um, the printing varies, so this was uh, using Risograph, and the students um, printed it and folded it themselves, as well as designing it. And this was the offset one, uh, the final one folded. And then this is the most recent one, and that was just digitally printed. And it all culminates in an exhibition so that the students don't just produce this work and keep hold of it. It's actually shown so that other people at the university and my various contacts in London, Briar's various contacts, and also people that have undertaken uh, this collaboration in previous years can come, look at it, and kind of 
celebrate the work that's been done. And sometimes we've done this in the university exhibition spaces themselves. And sometimes we do them in um, various galleries across uh, London. And outside of the actual making, the doing of the projects, uh, the students do have time to unwind and go and uh, explore London. Um, sometimes part of it is in a pub. Uh, but also they go and kind of make the most of everything London's got to offer, all the fantastic um, museums and galleries. Uh, this one's in the London Transport Museum. I know it's one of Briar's favourites. And they also eat. Um, so Briar likes to start them off uh, in an English pub uh, with English food, um, which is a lot better than it used to be, so that's fine. Um, and we also have a kind of, not a last supper, a last meal, I guess. Uh, this time was in an Indian restaurant, but we often, um, I think the most recent one was in a Turkish restaurant. So we kind of like to make the most of all the different cultures within London, not just it being kind of stereotypically English. I don't think anyone had had Turkish in our group. No, a lot, there were a lot of surprise faces. Um, but that's good, that's good. Uh, and also, uh, this time around, um, Briar took some of the Portland students um, to an external workshop uh, for time type tasting with uh, Sarah Hindman. Um, where she took the students through uh, the kind of history of type and a chance to try lettering styles as they go. As we're on this image, a few of the students from this year and previous years are volunteering today, so try and chat to them if you can. We also take them on studio visits. This is at Spin with Tony Brook and at iMagazine with editor John Walters. And this is an MB studio with, sorry, Nick Finney. And so, reflecting on these, there are obviously outcomes that some of them we want the students to have um, kind of developed, but some are kind of almost accidental, really. And some of it is apparent to them and to us at the time. Some of it doesn't happen until further down the line. But it gives them a greater understanding of typography and design and the context and differences. Um, it helps them develop wider friendship circles and networks. Gives them career ambition. Gives them greater independence as well. And it helps develop their sense of cultural awareness. And also teamwork. A lot of them struggle with uh, working in groups and this kind of is a good way of just throwing them in at the deep end getting them to not be precious and work quite quickly in groups. And so the legacy uh, of this project is still going, so it's not, it's not dead yet. Um, but the students have kept in touch with one another. They've also travelled independently since doing the project to see each other. And some have looked at working in other countries. Um, but it's also had an impact beyond the participating students. We've now... Um, well, we're in year two of a student exchange where two students from each university go and study for a term at the other one. Uh, and this is Jodie from the first year. Um, she didn't do similarly different, but the exchange has directly come out of that and is now embedded in both courses. And Chris Roberts, a colleague who initially ran the foundation course at Farnham, for the last four years, he's been running a collaboration with Paris College of Art um, and Central St. Martins. And he took Similarly Different as a kind of starting point, as an inspiration for that. So the challenges. Um, funding is always a challenge. Um, but the most difficult so he comes in working within two different educational structures. So the PSU students get credits um, for taking part in this unit, whereas at London College of Communication, they don't. It's just an optional extra. Um, and because it's not fully embedded yet at London College of Communication, um, 
There are issues with funding not happening until the very last minute, which can make planning a problem. And um, in the future, we plan to, uh, well, it's happening at the moment, as part of the revalidation of the London College of Communications graphics course, um, the project is being written in, so it will now be more sustainable going forward, I think. There should be more, um, more opportunity, or opportunity for growing it. Um, we're also looking at extending it into other countries, um, which we're split with. We want to do it, but it's going to be a lot of extra work. Um, and we're looking at Denmark and Germany at the moment. Um, and there's also talk of extending um, the link beyond the graphics courses within the universities, so kind of cementing um, the links between the universities um, more fully. And all this just to keep it on the road, really. And that's it. Thank you very much. <laughs>